What up, y'all? Welcome to the video. As y'all coming in, y'all smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you ain't already subscribed. And with this one, I want to talk about something Javante Davis said in his interview. His most recent interview, you can look it up right now. Uh, damn, I forgot the name of the interview, but he did an interview, right? And he was asked a question, something like this. Basically asks, who do he look to fight after Ryan Garcia? So, my thing is, oftentimes people like, they make it seem like these guys want to fight Tank so bad, right? And Tank don't want to fight them as much or whatever the case may be. So, <clears throat> my whole thing with the situation is, right? This is why I've been on the Shakur versus Devin thing. Um, or the Devin versus Frank Martin or the Shakur versus Frank Martin. You know what I'm saying? Because what I'm doing is I'm just exposing the shit that these dudes be doing. I'm just exposing it because it shouldn't be where you want to fight Tank more than you want to fight these other guys. Yeah, you want to fight him because you feel like he, it, it shouldn't be like that. You should want to smoke just as bad as these other niggas because Tank is not the only one that's a great fighter at 135. There's other great fighters. The best ones at 135 to me is Tank, Shakur, Frank Martin, and Devin Haney. Those are the guys I look at the four best guys at the division, period. That's what I look at. So, I think I want to see niggas mix and match each other. And I seen an interview from Shakur the other day, too, where he was saying basically how if you black, you know, the same thing people been saying, basically, if you black, you, you can't really lose a fight or whatever. I think that shit played out. That ain't that ain't true no more, bro. I could have sworn Tony Harrison just came back, fought Tim Zhu. He lost before he even fought Jamel Charlo, and we still wanted him to fight Jamel Charlo. People were still interested, just as interested as if he never lost. And the same thing when he lost the uh, rematch with Jamel. After he lost, he came back and he still fought Tim Zhu. Niggas still wanted to see that. So the shit that named me the last fight that a nigga lost, that nigga just never wanted to see him fight again. And it was his first loss. And it was a close fight. Come on, dog. Stop it. That shit is a, a myth at this point. It's, it's no longer existing. But anyway, like I was saying, Tank named his hit list. And on his hit list, he said he coming out to Devin Haney. Lomachenko and, and, and Shakur Stevenson. So that, that's all the fuck I give a fuck about. <laughs> that's who, you know, and Frank Martin, that's all I want to see the, the guys fight each other like that. That's the top of the division. So what else more do you want the nigga to do? But he naming all them guys. But when you hear some of these other guys, like Devin Haney or, or, or Shakur, you know, I heard Shakur say he won't smoke with Devin Haney, too, and Tank. So, I ain't really heard no picking and choosing with him. But the Devin Haney, Bill Haney thing, them niggas ain't got the same energy for Shakur or whatever than they got for for, for Javante Davis. They say, they out here saying shit right now, like, Shakur on a publicity stunt. Publicity stunt? Nigga, I never seen Shakur on no bitch-ass shit like that. Never. I never seen him even give me the, the the vibes of a nigga who play like that. You know, you got other guys like uh, Ryan Garcia, Tiafimo Lopez, them type of dudes, you know. Maybe even Roley, but Roley, he'll fight though. But I'll take that for somebody else playing like that, you know, doing some kind of publicity bullshit. He don't he don't give me that, bro. Dude, dude 
is always going to be able to fight a weight class up from where he at because of his skill set. I'm talking about Shakur. So I don't, he don't give me no vibes like he just out here calling niggas out for clout. Nah, nah, bro. He want to fight, bro. <laughs> so, and y'all niggas ain't got no energy for him. Why? Because y'all yeah, yeah, got it all for Tank. You know what I'm saying? But Tank said he, he got both of them on his hit list. So I'm going to hold Tank to that because I don't, you know, to be honest, right, they say the winner of this fight is the face of boxing. No, this 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 shit don't determine that. Uh, I'm keeping a hundred. I'm a tame fan. Like this, this shit don't determine that, bro. This nigga Ryan ain't no fucking body. <laughs> nah, bro. It don't go like that. Ryan Garcia is a nigga with Instagram followers that you can pay for. You see what I'm saying? You you can pay for followers on Instagram. You probably can pay for that shit on YouTube too. You you can pay for popularity. But when your ass go to them goddamn fights and you have fights, your pay per view numbers and the people in the stands is what determine the level you on and the status you at when it comes to this boxing shit. Not no goddamn Instagram follower. You know, you can't get 10% of them niggas to buy a merchandise that you trying to sell. That shit don't work like that. It never did, bro. It's an illusion. You hear me, so? Ryan Garcia. I ain't saying he unknown, but he ain't, he ain't. Nah, bro. He ain't never sold no pay-per-views, bro. Never did one by itself, so this don't determine that. Tank, the man, and he going to be the man in the future, period. He's he just going to be the man because he generated a lot of revenue. He sell out in a lot of places, and, and he sell pay-per-views. Only person that sell more pay-per-views than him is what, Earl Spence and goddamn, what's that nigga? Canelo. Other than that, there ain't nobody else selling more pay-per-views than him. That Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury fight don't count. They had a big fight. It was a heavyweight fight. And that bitch sold numbers every time they fought. But them guys go fight on their own, do pay-per-views on their own. You know you're a pay-per-view star when you can bring somebody who no, no nobody fucking know and still sell out and still do pay-per-views. I seen Earl Spence do that. I see him Tank do that. So that's why I say what I say. But yeah, man, Tank said he wanna he got them niggas on his hit list, man. He wanna he wanna fight them. And I'm happy he ain't doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? Um He definitely about to knock out Ryan Garcia, cause Ryan, he like uh Ryan ass, man, his ass, he going to sleep, you know what I'm saying? Because he ain't on the level of tank, but we going to let it play out, though. I, I, I just want to see the fashion he get knocked out in. It's definitely going to make a big splash. I see why they saying that, you know what I'm saying? The winner of this, because it's going to go crazy on social media afterwards. Like the memes and, you know. And one thing Tank got that a lot of guys ain't got, which is why he will be the biggest star, is because he got, like, the youth and shit. If you ask one of these young dudes or young females or anything like that, because they barely even know. They don't really watch boxing like that. If you ask them who their favorite boxer, the only person they pretty much know is Javante Davis. <laughs> at, at this point, at this generation. Niggas know Floyd, of course, and Adrian Brown, but I'm talking about, like, of uh, this generation. Niggas really only know Tank. The casuals type shit, but it's something they know some other fighters, too, but I'm just saying, like, how NBA young boy is to rap. 
You see what I'm saying? I don't listen to NBA Young Boy because I just don't. But the younger crowd bump his ass. Listen to him all day. And he streamed the most. He's like the most streamed artist under Drake. You know what I'm saying? And he way younger. So Tank got like that effect. You see what I'm saying? Like it's about a combination of things like influence and the numbers to back, you know what I'm saying? Everything up. You know what I'm saying? That's what make a real superstar. So yeah, man. That's all I got, man. I just wanted to talk about that for a minute. That's what Tank said, bro. He, he got Devin and he got uh Shakur on his hit list. I got a feeling Devin might be next because to me, if we gonna be fair, Shakur really, really just got to the division, even though them niggas still got history. That's why I kind of throw that out the window. All them niggas came up together. So when Shakur called out Devin, I look at that just as credible. You know what I'm saying? Is anything else? He calling out there. You want to fight that? Frank doing his thing. Like you can't even shit on Frank because who more popular than him in the in the division under under those three guys? For him for him to have the amount of fights he got, that nigga is very ahead of the game, and he he, he making a lot of noise right now, so I'm gonna always toss him in that motherfucker in the pot. <laughs> Straight up. That's just how it's supposed to be. But y'all hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, you subscribed already. Tank got the energy for all them niggas. Bill Haney, Devin, he don't talk as much as Bill, to be honest. But Bill, he ain't got the energy for Shakur. Devin don't need it for real. Because them niggas ain't really. They don't want to fight Shakur at 135, bro. They don't. They want that tank fight. Then they feel like they want to go to 140. But when they go to 140, they also got Regis Progray problems. They got Gary Antoine, Antoine Russell problems. Nigga, them niggas is going to be problems, bro. You're not finna just go up there and just dominate niggas. No adversity. <laughs> nah, man. Two best guys at, at 140 is, is Regis Progray. Uh, Regis Progray and uh, Antoine Russell. That's all I got. Y'all hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and subscribe already, and I'm out. Deuces.